So this is podcast number five, and we're here on the rooftop gardens of Canary Wharf. We're joined by myself, Desu, Adam Greenberg, and Carl Rodriguez. Just before we head off to Binance Meetup, we're trying to get some cool topics out there for you. It's been a while since the last podcast, so Adam, how do you feel things have gone in the past couple of weeks? Um, yeah, things have been going uh, pretty well. We've been kind of really busy running around doing a lot of uh, meetings and, and planning for the future. I, I think for, for those of you who follow the, the Twitter and the are part of like, the Discord group, we've got the innovation roadmap that was just put out uh, about a week and a half ago. So if you haven't seen it, check it out because there's some cool ideas in there. Um, and we've also got on board one of our first advisors and mentors to the project. Yeah, welcome, Carl. Thanks a lot, Adam. It's really uh, it's lovely to be in this environment. We're just staring at some trees right now, which is, uh, makes a difference from Canary Wharf. But I think I've joined what been working with you guys now for a few weeks. And uh, just to maybe give a little bit of background on my you know, sort of history, I've, I've spent, uh, I always say this, sort of 20 plus, I was actually getting on for 25 years now in, <laughs> I'm getting older and older. <laughs> um, uh, in emerging technology, you know, so when the when the web happened, you know, I got, got very interested in in the web. You know, there was this magazine saying there was a company called Yahoo with an exclamation mark, and I was I was intrigued about things like that. And so I got into very much always been in data driven sort of situations and companies. So the web happened, you know, the boom and the bust, and then many things after that. And then uh, working with a lot of data innovators, and then got interested in blockchain. A few years ago, I uh, was involved with sort of real-time data with a company called Streamer and various different types of uh, data, you know, whether it's streaming, webcasting. Uh, and then, uh, you know, really excited to be with Sage City. I think a couple of things that, that really have grabbed me uh, since I've started that, that I think is interesting in terms of how blockchain's evolving and, and the sort of landscape out there. Because I've always had a, a sort of commercial background and I work with startups in terms of helping them to when they're when they're new and they're interesting in terms of creating new pioneering ideas it's about you know where where is the market and where's the match and where's the the actual people out there you know what are the needs that they're they're thinking about and what have we got that might fit with that and where we're going to go fastest in terms of traction and i think what's happening with blockchain that's interesting is obviously you know people have worked out you know we're over the hype cycle of of blockchain everybody knows isn't going to fix all problems and it's identifying certain use cases, maybe about things like supply chain, where there's an evident value in various different sectors for big enterprise solutions. And I've always in interacted, actually, with um, particularly my early days of streaming media with the pioneers and the, the visionaries who are potentially, you know, startups in, in their own right. Quite small companies don't have the big funds to go off and create massive solutions and, and spend big budgets, but actually understand how to innovate and how to actually do stuff that can create really big impact and they don't have to be big companies. So that seems to be obviously where say City's already got lots of traction and where I see that we can really, you know, turbo power that. On one level, it's um, things like, you know, how we've identified within the, the whole sort of payments side of things where you've got the internal payment system and we've got, you know, this kind of ability to disrupt the disruptors. So, you know, I remember when Stripe was a new kid on the block let's call them and you know they they were you know they were they were powerful and they have been you know their, their story has been powerful in terms of that small group of people going off and and really having a big impact on on the financial landscape and now say city are coming along and actually making them look a little bit tired you know in, <laughs> I choose my words carefully because because you know we, I, I have a big respect for companies who can go and and actually create big impact and and, and get significant results and do that in an innovative way. So I've got nothing against someone like Stripe. But I think it's really exciting seeing someone like, say, City coming along and actually saying, well, look, if we look at what companies are paying Stripe, if it's £2 per month per user, and then they've got multiple users and they've got multiple accounts and they're trying to actually track those accounts. And actually, when you get into the world of gaming or, or other creative industries like music and so on, where there are now microtransactions, everyone's been thinking about how do you do microtransactions in a you know, sort of internet of money way. Will now suddenly say sit and come along and use some of the blockchain types of technologies that we're familiar with, like Ethereum models and so on. But actually, we're coming along with sidechains and blockchains that can reduce even Ethereum 
uh, in terms of the tokenization and the token fees and then um, the way to actually manage those user accounts and so on. And suddenly I'm hearing about, you know, one of the one of the clients that we've got in the fintech space who've saved 85 percent of their costs. My sweet spot has, has been really where Sage City is at, where they've obviously got a good sense of where they're going. They know what they're doing. They've got some traction. You know, people like Adam and Tom have been uh, out there talking to people and have already built up some some transactions, as in deals, and, and got them over the line. And now it's like, okay, how do we actually do that to the next level? Where we, you know, So I'll be opening as many doors as I can with, number one, the network that I've built up over 20 years. And number two, with some companies that I'm, you know, I, I love taking a value proposition, honing it, and then going and finding the right sectors where we can where we can go and talk to people. And I've already started doing that just on an anecdotal level. You know, I've met Tom and had, you know, quite a few chats with him now. And, and um, you know, we get on really well. I mean, I, I, I just really enjoy being with Desio and Adam and, and Tom, who are the three key people that I've met so far. And, we, you, know, we, you know, when you just have a, a meeting of minds or a cultural sort of alignment, and, and it's fun, you know, you, you get energized and you think about, what we can go and do and obviously these guys are, are just so evidently knowledgeable about the the technology and the ability to apply it and then I can come along with actually some of the people I met 20 years ago in some of the environments I'm, I'm literally going to people and it's really fun for me because I'm talking to people where we used to be pioneering in the webcasting space and you know they they we've all been in that space where we were we were some of the early companies sort of streaming things like music festivals I think actually Tornado Productions, where I used to work, we were the, we were one of the first companies to stream people like Madonna and Ian Jury and the Blockheads and stuff like that before we did oh. Reading and and then Glastonbury and and now I'm going off to one of the guys who I know who was who was uh, running one of the music brands that was very pioneering in terms of digital media, Play Louder, and then uh, someone else that I know is is uh, setting up a, a marketplace for for um, you know how you bring music producers and um, data owners you know music owners together and stuff like that so it, it, it just seems you know these things have a certain flow to them it's uh seems to be the right place at the right time you touched upon it uh briefly in uh, what you were saying joining the or being part of the the sage city culture how have you felt from kind of an outsider perspective initially like getting involved in some of the the processes and stuff tom's been responsible for a lot of that movement but i know that that was one of the things that you and him in particular clicked over initially. Yeah, if you want to share a bit of thoughts on that. Yeah, excellent question. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been a process. As you say, I mean, it's, it's almost like a process before the, the actual process engaged because I think, you know, it's like in anything like this in business, you, we meet as humans first, find any uh, common. In fact, Desio was the first person who ever spoke to me. And, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we had a meeting of minds because we were both causing trouble at an event about our dietary requirements and he's he's sort of got intrigued by my my uh sort of no dairy uh you know sort of troublemaking and uh so we had to wait and then uh, he was waiting for a vegan and so we got chatting and uh and so you know it, it, yeah i mean these things obviously do start in a in a in these kind of very human ways and then uh so i'm trying to think of actually the first time that i met tom officially it was but yeah, it was on that day. It was it was in that day, and actually, we, yeah, we Desio had a very good idea about actually let's. He made a point actually. I remember just saying let's let's go off and actually sit down and have a proper lunch. We like to sit down, and actually, I'm you know, it's a really good uh, remem uh, memory of that because you know I've grown up in a family of foodies where you know you, you congregate, and I know a lot of cultures. You're talking about culture in terms of our work. You know, Desio was picking up on the fact that people congregate around you know the food ritual, and actually, it's a we're going to actually after this conversation go and sit down and combine food with you know going through my little list of things I wanted to talk to Adam about in terms of business but you know that is a great way to you know build that community and I think you know what I found off the the back of that is Tom's it's very interesting you know because one of the things I'm interested in I'm I'm setting up a a, a network specifically for scale-ups and you know definition of a scale-up being that company who's kind of got over 10 employees and then at the beginning of that, starting to get growth of, okay, say City hasn't even got three years under its belt, but typically, you know, that, that idea of 10, 20% growth in those years, but growing to a certain size now. And it's, it's interesting what Tom's put in place because he's, he's already got those processes, which I think, you know, companies start to face at that sort of 10 plus employee number of like, how do we get from 10 to 30 people? And I've seen that with startups where they have to put in processes. I've been in companies actually bought companies I've been working in who are you know the big behemoths like level three communications who actually will you know 
one of the biggest funded companies in Wall Street history. They they had the issue of acquisition wise, they built lots of you know bought lots of companies, and then had all these sort of Siebel systems and different CRMs. That was an absolute nightmare because I was a human being trying to effectively fudge the system because it, you know like you couldn't rely on the technology to support you at that level. There's too many systems and. And so it was, it, I used to laugh because that, that just didn't work, but you know, you had to find a way to make it happen. What Tom's done is he's put in processes which are very, you know, we've both got a, a sort of interest in personal development. I'm a trained coach. And so we understand, you know, some of this stuff around personal development and I'm engaging with, you know, it's that idea. I read, I read a great book a while ago called Conscious Business, which was talking about, you know, how do you bring your whole self to work and how do you get one's own individual values aligned with the company values and I think that's what Tom and you guys are really obviously interested in and now what Tom's done is he's actually through the different sort of ways that he thinks about this in terms of merits and tasks and, and uh, projects and so on we actually have a way that the theoretical vision of what we all believe in and get fired up by in terms of our our actual DNA and, and what what makes us tick can then get put through a process which then connects to the physical things like Trello, like uh, Slack to an appoint and email and, and all these other things. But we know when we're doing something, and actually the most exciting thing for me really on a, on a fundamental level is one of the things that I'm going to talk to you guys about later is one of the opportunities that we've now got. Companies come to us with two opportunities, one of which just seems to have a great flow about it. The other, I have a question mark about where technology is going and what I feel fundamentally is sometimes responsible technology. We know those kind of phrases. What do we want to do as a company or what do I want to do as a, an individual when we come to create, using our technology in connection with other companies and what impact that's going to have? I love the fact that we have the space to talk about those things and then make collective decisions. So I don't feel like it has to be me jumping up and down saying, hey guys, this is really important and, and then I'm going to get stroppy if we don't all agree with it. I totally like the idea, and obviously this is a very kind of blockchain way of working, is that we have these you know, sort of consensus mechanisms where the group can sort of, you know, process it, have a vote, and then everybody kind of respects each other on that level. And, and But, you know, most importantly, everybody gets a chance to, to actually air what they've got, and there's a space for that, you know? And, um, yeah, this, the, I mean, I think, to be really honest, I think Sage City has really nailed a lot of that stuff that companies normally do later on. So I would think that that as long as we do that in a, and it certainly seems like we are in a streamlined way, then we're ahead of the curve in terms of when we do get to 20 people and beyond. The people who constantly get used to working in that way will be very uh, efficient and therefore it becomes easier for people to come in and then leverage the fact that we've already put things in place. And and, and then I think, you know, what what is interesting is I think what Tom's put in place, actually, to be blunt about it, is he's he's found a way to actually flush out people who are not really that into the way that we are motivated. And I can see, you know, there's there's a bit of a pipeline of other people that we might want to get into our community that might want to work or support us. And actually, we're going to... I think I've got no problem with saying no to business or not taking on certain people in the group because ultimately there's an energy about this. And if we can actually find the people who really believe in what we believe in and, and then get that group tooled up and energized and literally tooled up, you know, in terms of then firing them up with, with tools that they can go and use, then you, you can scale that. It's not going to be for everybody, but actually I think particularly if we get a bit international about it, then you can, you can get some really uh, exciting groups where actually we can go deep in terms of what we're what we're doing and i think tom and you adam and, and desio i know are certainly very interested in the, the whole big vision of, of sage city in terms of you know the whole zero cost economy stuff and actually then i think we can we can plot a path to some of those bigger things because we've got our roots very strong yeah it's interesting that um what you're, you're talking about about how we've built things for you know 20 30 people potentially i think the reason we made that kind of we're able to make that kind of leap and get things together is because, uh, we, not to sound too big headed or anything, but we, we knew that what we were up to was going to become big and become something more than just the two of us. And for the first three, four months, we, we barely touched blockchain technology. We worked primarily on the systems and how 
when we bring people in, things start to work and how we organize all that. So, yeah, it's good to see that um, people coming in uh, appreciate it and, you know, understand its values. Uh, that's a big props to, to particular Tom's work. For the, the listeners, you know, we've talked a lot about like the business and everything, but what about you as a person, Carl? Like, what, what do you like doing uh, on a, a Friday night or, um, you know, hanging out? Or perhaps like if you've got any books or things you want to like share or that have inspired you, that'd be cool to share. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, and that, that really feeds into the other thing that I really love about Sage City actually is when, when I've met you guys that, you know, I do have a passion for personal development and, you know, let's call it mysteries of the universe. And, you know, I, I was, <laughs> to be honest, I, I, what is my hobby? My hobby is going down the rabbit hole, if, if truth be told. <laughs> you know, I find playing down that rabbit hole to be, you know, and actually, bizarrely, you know, it, it takes me to sometimes some quite dark places, but I have, I have a, um, for me, it's a game. You know, it's a game where, uh, actually, we're, we're going off to the gaming sector, aren't we? And, and I, I used to play a bit of computer games, not, not so much these days. Actually, I was listening to someone recently Someone who I follow, I mean, like just to throw out a few names, I mean, on the, on the more sort of like in, inverted commas spiritual side of things, I mean, there's, there's a guy called Sri Sri Ravi Shankar who set up an organization called Art of Living Foundation. They teach things like uh, yogic breathing exercises. He's, he's like a humanitarian, you know, he's, he's had a huge impact on, you know, he goes and talks to terrorists and stuff and chills them out or people in prison and, and you know, sort of helps to broker peace deals. And, and when there's an earthquake, you know, these people go in and it's like the world's biggest NGO by number of volunteers because the, the courses they run are very empowering for people they lift them up they reduce stress and all this stuff and then people want to give back because they've been given something through the course so um i'm trying to remember why why i sort of thought about him but he um it was something that um i think well, was a saying about the rabbit hole but um <laughs> what's what's the relation with him but um well anyway i mean you know the, the, the yeah, I mean, they, they, they that thing um, gave me a lot in terms of, you know, how actually they have a corporate cause. You know, how how do you function in this world and and actually get happy, right? You know, that's the thing. You know, if it, from my perspective, I, I, w- I wouldn't call it even. An, it's a funny word, spiritual. I don't, I don't like the word anymore. Like, but personal development and empowerment. I, I totally, um, I totally love that that whole thing. So, how do I get more? I went on a course recently, you know, called Psyche. I don't know, people out there who might have followed a guy called Bruce Lipton who's written a great book called Biology of Belief. And that talks about how do you um, access the supercomputer, basically, in the brain. Uh, obviously, we're all, all in this kind of environment. We like the idea of hacking systems. And um, how do we hack the brain, you know? And how do we get either more happiness or more, more results easier and more health, more anything, like more better relationships, better health and stuff. So I went on that course recently. That that's the kind of thing I you know I like to do in my spare time as well because it just you know it, it I love going to gigs and stuff like that. I mean music was one of the things I clicked with Tom on when we first spoke because I when I was about fourteen I just it was a massive moment in my life because it just alternative music became suddenly a I used to go to gigs and I used to just absolutely let go and I remember it just being like it's, it's before I learned about mindfulness I used to get into these moments when I used to be there and I would just go nothing else matters I'd be in the moment and and you know there'd be this thing between the band and the audience where there would be an incredible energy from the band to the audience and from the a- audience to the band I mean in those days it was late 80s right so I became a goth when it first started <laughs> then I became an indie kid and then grunge happened and you know, all fused into, you know, a bit of shoegazing and then a bit of, I mean, I used to, I I used to, Desio's getting exciting there, but, you know, I used to love getting into the front of the mosh pits and just, I'm a short bloke, right, but I've got a, like, a low center of gravity, if you think about John Franco Zola, you know, (laughs) and how he can, you know, sort of be short, but, you know, like, he could leverage himself so he can kick the ball quite hard. I used to go in these mosh pits and sort of, you know, be able to make sure I didn't, like, kind of break anything and, and be able to hold my own, so, you know, whether it was mud honey and, and falling. I remember once, I never really fell over, but one time at Reading Festival and just falling over in the mud and being picked up by a few guys while we were having a mud fight with the band. But it was just brilliant camaraderie with the, the fans and stuff. And actually, I always think about it now. I mean, I'm, I, used to, I used to go to bands, have the band T-shirts, the right 
band t-shirt and now it's like i've got the right startup t-shirts for a blockchain meetup <laughs> and, and like i found sage city as what to me you know i, I actually had offers of going and working for record labels years ago and, and it, that was because i loved finding the right um bands you know and, and now i like to find the right sort of startups who are doing fun things and then the same process actually to kind of match match the companies out there so so the work i, I really do is it is a passion I, I love cryptos and investing in cryptos i really in my own kind of world I, I really want to build enough revenues and stuff whether that's through things like networks and building or i like investing in cryptos i want to i want to get money moving so that i can actually empower companies that really are genuinely going to have a positive impact because i you know i'm very fired up by what's going on in the world and actually you know when i see we're all we're all watching things particularly in tech you know what fires me up more than anything and it's not maybe for everyone but i i to be really open about it i i we're in a battle you know we're in a battle whether it's internally in our heads or in the tech scene you know one of the things i've been a little bit disillusioned by in the tech scene to be honest is where we're heading driven by a lot of the big tech companies you know i'll name them i don't mind naming them you know google facebook if we put google facebook and um yeah amazon you know the the the, the big ones are really defining a lot of where we're going when when you get i mean i've been really involved with iot and smart cities and i'm about to make a video the next one i mean i've been making youtube videos for a while but not in a real you know i haven't really really fully got behind it and, and i think from having worked in the smart city world for, the, for a long time my, my next video is going to be called smart city heaven or hell wow. <laughs> and, and you know i know what the hell looks like and i know that you know if we talk about manhattan project and and where people were divided up into different compartments i've been witnessing the different compartments and and meeting really intelligent well meaning meaning people who I just don't think, of. we have suspicions, but nobody really talks about the idea that there's an AI compartment around autonomous vehicles, there's another compartment which is 5G, that's the telco companies, they don't talk necessarily to everybody else, then you've got the IoT, then you've got sort of real-time data, and then you've got other compartments, big data and facial recognition, and we can see where it's heading. Most people in, in innovative tech know one potential surveillance state we know it's on its way we don't really talk about it to the nth degree and i think i want to personally I, I kind of feel a bit mischievous about gathering a bit of an army of people that are willing to say yeah you know what we collectively would like to do something about it and, and i know that's already existing but i want to i want i find it like a playful game to actually meet some of the um the darker sides of, of where I think the world is organized because I think the people who are creating some of the, the, the nightmare doomsday scenarios are actually very organized and really super mischievous and I think you know if I meet more and more people who you know are talented but actually can sometimes confront some of that just say yeah you know what we're going to face that but actually now we, we're going to play our own game that actually is where my personal enthusiasm and work sort of time meets and and i want it to be a playful thing but i also want it to be very powerful yeah what, what you're saying there really struck a chord with me because i think that there's a lot of well first of all i think that the majority of the future that we're going to see is the the developments we're going to see they're not necessarily user facing they're more about ideologies and also perhaps the underlying technologies i i think that the next transition from maybe people like Facebook or Google are decentralized uh, applications which don't track you or have the privacy functions to to make sure that you know you're not being manipulated in some sense. Um, there was a we got introduced actually to a company who were working on billboards which would be able to connect with like smart uh, what are they called autonomous cars. You know they would track. Who was well? I, there's going to become a point where these self-driving cars know who the the, the people in the car actually are, uh, and also the route that they're going to go. So, if they can communicate with external devices to show relevant adverts to people, that's kind of a dangerous and terrifying realm. C 
could reach a point where if you know a certain collective of people are going to constantly be going by a certain route every day, you can begin to manipulate them into purchasing things or changing their mindsets in like very slight ways. And psychological experiments around that have been going on since like the early 2010s. Facebook conducted a study where they were able to change users' moods depending on uh, the order or what they showed them on their news feed and things like that. We're in this like very dangerous area where people aren't thinking about the real, you know, maybe the second or third consequence of, of what they're actually doing. So, yeah, I'm, what you said there really resonated with me and that's something that I think about a lot personally when I'm designing tools and especially when we're thinking about, you know, zero cost living. Like, I think there is a thing as things being too perfect. There could be mental health problems there could be all kinds of things that we've not fully clocked yet on our journey which could be on our journey which could be really detrimental or human behavior and core yeah adam i mean absolutely i resonate with your resonating <laughs> it's yeah i mean it, we could talk all day about this stuff isn't it i mean it's i think you made a really good point about the different steps and how people are not necessarily seeing the th second step and the third step and, and all those steps beyond and I think that's that's been a big thing for me is, you know, I, I listen to some people who kind of dot joining exercise where you can start to say a bit like what I was saying about, you know, when the Manhattan Project was building the atomic bomb, those in the atomic bomb, the opponents couldn't see how it was all going to fit together. And I think some of us who spend our whole days thinking about this stuff and particularly, you know, when when you like you say, when you're building tools where you have a sense of where that could be applied and in and you're designing systems, even like we mentioned Amazon earlier, you know, I mean, Jeff Bezos famously said to his employees you got to design for open infrastructures because he could tell that that was going to be uh, fundamental in terms of how we build these things and I know infrastructure is a big word you know even when we think about um, governments and stuff like that um, we'd, I'm just staring at a young boy and we're staring at a young boy who's the future of the world and he's the future and we're we're, we're we're creating a world for him and, and all the rest of us you know it's um it's the infrastructure he's he's now gone left us to it um yeah we're thinking about you know building these infrastructures and i think um yeah lots of things are joining up but there is uh, to be honest like yeah sometimes this let's i mean let's put it into real tangible terms because i think there's there's one that i think will probably it's it's one of these that i think puts the mind in the focus so let's say um in china you know when you've got the social credit scoring I find that a really good one for getting us to, a really good one for getting us into where we could be and where we could go. And if you, you, I could definitely paint a picture where I could fill in those 10 steps, a few more terrorist attacks, a few more steps where people, it's this idea of like problem, reaction, solution, where you get certain problems happen and then the, the public freak out and then people are sort of saying, well, you know, we, We've really tried not to, but I'm we've really tried not to. But I mean, climate change is the ready-made situation where you could easily combine social credit scoring because you're going to suddenly. I mean, I, I freak out a little bit when when people talk about the resource-based economy because suddenly, you know, you've got this. I, I was I was interested actually. There's a guy who I follow who who started talking about you know kind of divide and rule and how you've got sort of left wing, right wing, and even even starting to challenge even starting to challenge concepts like democracy decisions where it, it doesn't really allow for the space of individual rights and sovereignty necessarily you suddenly got like i don't know it gets into you know i'm sure everybody out there you know we, we just get intrigued by these concepts of like individual sovereignty you know and of like individual sovereignty you know and and yes we've got you know this idea of collectivism where you've got government and a society which suddenly says and a society which suddenly will have social credit scoring and then suddenly Someone's going to come along and tell me if I disagree with something about the use of resources in my household, then I'm going to be kicked out of being able to get a faster train or whatever, and uh, and and everything else that you described in terms of you know where I'm going and and all the rest of it will be monitored and tracked and and I totally think that some of this I totally think that my home, what I do in the home, what I see of my home, what I do in the home, it's not anybody's business, and I certainly don't think it's their business to then judge me if I disagree with the judges. And, you know, then we get into the realms of, you know, what government is for. And, <laughs> and we're both grinning because that's maybe something we'll talk over a beer about. But I know this thing can only go on for so long. Yeah, uh, always happy to talk about this stuff. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, I, I really am pleased to 
you know, actually, whoever's listening out there, you know, just I hope this will be a, you know, a, a collective discussion because I know that the Say City Ethos is about empowering lots of people out there. And, and I do feel very behind that. So if anybody out there wants to, you know, kind of talk to me or guys in connection with any of these topics, I want to be a catalyst to, to a lot of other people who might be curious about some of this stuff. You know, I, I believe in empowerment. And if I can then empower people who want to also accelerate their own empowerment around these kind of concepts, then, you know, I'd be very happy to spend time on that. Yeah, look forward to the next uh, discussion. Yeah, so one of the things that we're, we're now collecting are questions from yourselves, from the listeners, from the community. And we're doing this through Twitter, through Bitcoin Talk and Discord as well for those on those platforms. And we want to be able to answer some of the questions that came through this discussion. And we want to continue those discussions with you too. So please fire a message to our inbox and we'll get to it at some point in another podcast. For now, we're signing off from Canary, Canary Wharf. I still don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. Do subscribe if you feel like it. I never asked to do that, but today's a, a good day to start asking for a small thing in return. All right. Catch you next time. And Carl, you have to end this with... Be sagacious, everybody. I'll sing it next time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>